Runes are a major part of Season of Discovery. Discoverable throughout the world at all levels of play, with the purpose to either smooth out classes and specs by giving them much needed effects and abilities, or to add more variety and fun to a current playstyle of a class or a spec. However, as we all know, not all runes are created with equal power. And after a few phases, we are now sitting here with a whole bunch of underperforming and dead runes, for one reason or another. So let's take a look at some of the runes that most definitely could do with some major help or a complete rework. We'll look at just a few runes per class, and although there may be many more that need changing or reworking, the runes that I'll go over in this video are in my opinion runes that need the most work to make them a competitive choice. Also bear in mind I've not played as much for some of the classes and specs, so you might have a better idea on some runes than I do, and I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on classes runes down below. Starting off with my main class, the Paladin. Now where to even start? You could pick nearly any rune in the Paladin's arsenal and be like, what the fuck is that? In my opinion, nearly all of the runes need either reworking, getting substantially buffed, or even being made into baseline abilities and have runes replacing those that would be lost. But all of that is for a completely separate video which I'll most definitely go into in the future. The first rune we're going to talk about is Horde of Lordaeron. So this rune, I assume, is the counterpart to the Shaman Totems, Strength of Earth and Grace of Air. Now there's a couple of problems with this. Firstly, it doesn't stack with Blessing of Might, which probably to be fair would be powerful in favour of the Alliance. But that alone makes it only slightly stronger than just Blessing of Might, which is baseline and you 100% have someone within the raid with improved Blessing of Might. Secondly, it competes with the most powerful rune that Paladins have, which is Seal of Martyrdom. Not only does Seal of Martyrdom contribute heavily to your damage as a DPS Paladin or a tank, but it is also the mana battery for the raid, leaving Horn of Lordaeron to be only used by Holy Paladins, which again, strikes another problem, as it's only party wide and you'll never have a Holy Paladin in a melee group. The second rune that desperately needs changing is Divine Sacrifice. I have seen nearly every rune in the game be used in some way or another no matter how bad it is, but I honestly have never used or even witnessed a single paladin ever use Divine Sacrifice. It competes with Exorcism, which if you're a DPS or tank, nearly all of your other runes synergize with Exorcism, making it literally mandatory to take with no room for change, which yet again leaves it only to be used for Holy Paladins. Sadly, even for Holy Paladins, this rune is terrible as it only affects party members and it cannot be used while under the effect of Divine Shield or Blessing of Protection, meaning the effect will break instantly and most likely cost a battle res onto the Paladin who will use this terrible ability. Hunters, despite being strong at all stages of Sod so far, surprisingly have a handful of useless and lackluster runes that definitely could do with a shape up, such as Invigoration. This rune restores 5% of your maximum mana when your pet critically strikes with a special ability. You know what else can restore mana to hunters that isn't a rune? Came in the form of a spellbook in phase 2? That's right, Aspect of the Viper, meaning any real potential use of this rune was taken away the same time it was released. It also shares a slot with Dual Wield Specialization and Trap Launcher, so yeah, even if Aspect of the Viper wasn't a thing, it's still not looking great there, is it? The other rune for hunters I want to mention is Cobra Strikes. While there's nothing necessarily wrong with the rune itself, it's just not very good. It's very underwhelming considering it's on the chest slot competing against some of the best runes a hunter can offer. I mean, what good is your pet critically striking for its next two special attacks after you score a crit with a shot ability, when you could just straight up have 20% increased stats with Heart of the Lion while also giving 10% of that stats to the entire raid? I think this rune could be cool, especially for some sort of solo play, but I would love to see it slightly reworked into maybe some sort of variation of your pet's next two abilities are free to cast, as well as being critical hits, and maybe make it an ability with a short cooldown similar to Kill Command, but significantly increasing the power of the rune. Just some thoughts. Moving on to Druids. There's two runes that really stuck out to me. The first being School Bash. Charge to a target within 13 yards and bash the target's skull, interrupting spell casting and preventing any spell in that skull from being cast for 2 seconds. Shares a cooldown with Feral Charge. To me, this just sounds like a worse version of Feral Charge. So why would anyone literally take it? Even if it didn't compete with any other runes whatsoever, it's quite literally a worse Feral Charge. And they share a cooldown. So you might think that's maybe some niche PvP rune for non-ferals, but then you remember it competes with Sunfire and Wild Growth both of which definitely would be better to take in any circumstance I would assume, and actually for Feral Druids themselves, it competes with Mangle. Bit of a no-brainer there. The second rune, or should I say runes to talk about, 
is one that feral tanks in particular get hindered by, especially on the alliance side, and that is wild strikes competing with survival of the fittest. Imagine this, you're a main tank in a guild and you're on the alliance, so there's no shamans for Windfury. You're in front of a hard hitting boss, let's say Patchwork. You really want to take your best mitigation tanking rune which makes you crit immune and reduces damage done by a flat 20% while you're in bear form. But then you realise you're in a melee group. Where the other four people in your group are likely playing classes such as Warrior which is quite literally unplayable without Wild Strikes or Wind Fury. So naturally you're forced to not use your best mitigation tank rune and instead run at Wild Strikes. To not grief your party of course. So while this video is about runes that potentially need a rework and neither of these runes typically need reworking. It had to be mentioned because it's always been such a huge oversight on feral tanks and while it's not really a problem right now because bosses don't hit particularly hard, there's nothing to say it won't become a problem in the future. Rogues, quite similar to Hunters, have been relatively strong within Season of Discovery, excluding their dreadful time during Phase 2 at least. So it probably sounds quite surprising that they also have quite a handful of runes that just aren't very good. Starting off with Shuriken Toss. While this rune literally does what it says on the tin, it's just shit. Simple as that. It doesn't necessarily compete with runes that blow it out of the water or anything like that, well at least in PvE. But then taking Shadow Step over Shuriken Toss will probably still provide a DPS increase in most situations just because of how weak Shuriken Toss is. Now does it need a rework? Kind of. I mean it would need such a substantial buff to make it actually useful that you could consider that a rework. Better yet, it could be reworked into Fun of Knives because Rogue is one of the few classes that struggle with any kind of AoE or cleave and it really feels bad when you're pretty much the one that's left behind while everyone else is doing great AoE damage. The other rune to mention for Rogues is Poison Knife. Now also remember to bear in mind there is other runes as well that are lackluster but I'm trying to keep it to two runes per class. So Poison Knife. It's on the same slot as Shuriken Toss and Shadow Step, so again, it's the same story. It's not exactly competing with S tier runes, so to say, but Poison Knife just sucks. You instantly throw your offhand at range with a 100% chance to inflict poisons on the target in a Wars 1 combo point. So I cannot realistically see where this can ever be useful over just straight up taking Shadow Step and, you know, Shadow Stepping directly to the target. If you're trying to Rogue Kite, I guess maybe it has an extremely niche there but I can't really see it myself. From one melee to another, let's talk about the warrior. Now I know for a fact this is going to sound controversial because warriors tend to have the loudest opinions on their class being quote unquote bad and having boring and lackluster runes etc. But if I'm being 100% honest, I genuinely can see a use case for nearly every warrior rune in one way or another. Yes, the runes themselves probably aren't the most interesting, and yes, you'll always have a most optimal rune in any given slot for what you're trying to achieve, but all the runes given to the warrior to some extent do have usefulness for DPSing, whether it's as dual wield, glad stance, two-hander DPS, and usefulness as a tank. That being said, there is one rune that does glaringly stick out amongst the rest that definitely could do with a rework into something different, and that is Blood Frenzer. Not only does this rune compete with some of the best runes on offer to the warrior, but in all honesty, it doesn't really do a lot. Each time you deal bleed damage, you gain 3 rage. Does it sound like it would go very far when you could have 25% bonus damage cooldown or warbringer in PvP? Maybe this could be reworked into having some sort of extra synergy with rend to make it actually a very good ability to use for once? I don't know, let me know what you guys think. As for the warlock, we're going to start with soul siphon. It increases the amount drained and the damage of Drain Life and Drain Soul by up to 18%. But then we remember we're in a vanilla version of Classic as a baseline and Drain Soul absolutely sucks for damage. And then we have Drain Life, as it's a channeled ability, you have to sink 5 talent points into Fell Concentration for 70% reduced pushback for it to even be playable. But why would you ever do this when you could just pick up another rune in the same slot called Master Channeler, which turns the channel into a dot effect and increases the healing by 50%. It's a bit of a no-brainer which to take if you want to use Drain Life. And even then, it's in a slot competing with Demonic Tactics. Though I will say I think it's a pretty easy solution to fix this rune. Just turn it into an Execute like in Wrath of the Lich King, and then using Drain Soul in PvE would actually be useful damage. The other Warlock rune to mention is Shadow Flame. The ability itself is pretty cool, but you know what isn't cool about the ability? Yeah, it's the damage it deals. For an AoE ability that has a 15 second cooldown, it literally hits like a wet noodle. 
I mean, maybe it has some sort of mass AoE capability where it's more useful, or the niche times in PvP where it's used to get a conflag off as the damage over time effect it leaves can be consumed by conflag. Maybe adding a slow, a stun, or a disorientation similar to Mage's Dragon Breath from Burning Crusade could at least give it, you know, more usefulness. Priest has been one of the major standouts in Season of Discovery for its healing power in both PvE and PvP. Talking about PvP, Shadow has also been a dominant force but just lacked any real eye water in DPS in raids, outside of the first one or two weeks in Phase 2 of course. Honestly looking at the runes for Priest, they are all actually not too bad and in most cases could potentially see some play. But with that being said, if I were to choose two runes for the Priest to be looked at, Spirit of the Redeemer would be one of them. It's on the same slot as Dispersion and essentially fills the same role as Dispersion would, although in a worse way. They are both runes aimed at mana efficiency and have some drawbacks such as not being able to cast or being able to move while using them. The big difference comes in the fact that Spirit of the Redeemer requires you to take Spirit of Redemption in the Holy Tree, forcing you to dive deep into a tree you may not necessarily want to go down. This paired with the CC break, immunity and complete damage reduction that Dispersion offers that is widely useful in both PvE and PvP kind of makes this rune a bit lackluster. The second rune I'd touch on for Priest is probably Twisted Faith. I don't particularly think this rune is bad, and it most definitely has saw play and still does continue to see play in some situations, but when it's on the same slot as Void Plague, one of the hardest hitting damage over time effects in the game, makes it a hard sell to pick up. Having it only affect Mind Flay and Mind Blast may as well just say it affects only Mind Blast because Mind Flay still continues to be a pretty bad ability and probably a waste of a talent point. Changing this to affect Mind Spike also could definitely give a helping hand, although it would still compete with Void Plague which in any case is still just pretty hard to give up on. Rewind time for Mage has to be the most useless rune that Mages have within their kit. Maybe it can see some niche PvP play, but I think the aim for this rune was probably more for a big instant heal on a tank within a raid, as mages heal through dealing damage and this would give them a proper big instant heal on a 30 second cooldown. There's just one major problem with this. It competes with the absolute mandatory arcane healing rune, Arcane Blast, which is the bread and butter to a healing mage in Season of Discovery. I've heard of mages not even knowing what this rune is called or what the ability even does as they're straight up not bothered because losing arcane blast would be huge. I think this definitely needs a major rework or even just straight up moved off into a different slot for it to be useful. Temporal Anomaly is also extremely underwhelming. The idea behind the rune in my opinion is really good and would actually be really good if it affected the entire raid and not just your party group. Its absorption shield is extremely weak, which wouldn't be too bad if you could stick it under the melee and tank cluster for tons of smaller shields across half of the raid. Think of it a bit like a Valineer from Wrath of the Lich King, but the fact that the shields are so weak and only affect your party members, when as a healer you'll be in a ranged group where a tiny 200 damage shield won't go in any way to help at all. I honestly think fixing this is pretty easy, just make it raid wide and make the orb travel faster so it's not useless if there's any movement. And lastly we have the Shaman, oh the Shaman, the overtuned big boy of Season of Discovery. But funnily enough, for the amount of power their kit has and the amount of daily posts on the forums about how broken Shamans are, still have some pretty bad runes, one of them being Static Shock. The rune itself in comparison to the other runes in the wrist slot struggles to find any real place. It's competing with Rolling Thunder, which has insane burst potential and great synergy with Maelstrom Weapon, and then there's also Overcharged which will now just every 3 seconds deal AoE damage to everything within 8 yards while never losing charges of lightning shield. And also Riptide, which of course has many uses in PvE and PvP. How would you fix this rune when it's amongst such a powerful lineup of runes? I really don't know. But there's gotta be a way to rework this rune somehow or just make it more appealing to take. Fire Nova replaces your Fire Nova Totem spell which causes your current Fire Totem to emit damage at its location. That alone sounds pretty underwhelming in the grand scheme of things, and then it shares a slot with a melee rune that is probably one of the most powerful runes in the entire game, called Maelstrom Weapon. So if you're an enhanced shaman or a tank, don't even think about anything else. If you're an elemental or a resto shaman, there is potential to use the Fire Nova rune for some good AoE damage, however it can be pretty clunky to use, and the caster alternative on this slot is Power Surge, which can give you a bit of mana back but more notably has a chance to reset the cooldown and make your next spell cast an instant cast on some of your major abilities such as Lava Burst or Chain Heal. 
But those are just my thoughts on which runes could do a full rework or some mini rework to make them more competitive or at least have some sort of usefulness throughout certain areas of play. Let me know which runes you think need a rework or a potential buff or potential nerf. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.